Hello viewers, welcome back to another So Thirsty episode. Now you're probably sick and tired of all the eating videos, so today we're going to take a break. Today we're going to travel to what was previously known as the dirtiest city in China. So grab your napkins and wet wipes, we're traveling to the city of Da Tong. Now with so much to see and explore, let's officially kickstart our journey with a 5 hour bus ride from Beijing. <sighs> yeah, I know. Let's go! Tong is the northernmost city of the Shanxi province and it has the greatest coal deposits in China. In the past, when coal fueled the urbanization and industrialization of China, the extraction of coal resulted in a fume-stained city and severe air pollution, which earned Ta Tong its nickname as the dirtiest city in China. But thankfully, much has changed since then and it is now known for its abundant historical relics and natural beauty. Now, back to our bus ride, it wasn't half as bad because throughout the journey, we got to see the natural landscape unveil itself. And if you're new to China and can't really speak the native language, I highly recommend looking for tour groups that organize trips for foreigners. For this trip, we tried a WeChat-based organization called Lao Wai or FCN, short for Foreigner China. Anyway, for our two-day Ta Tong adventure, we will be visiting four scenic spots. First we will risk our lives by visiting the Hanging Monastery, after which we will enter the city of Ta Tong to explore the mighty ancient city wall. For the next day, we will check out the amazing temples in the Hua Yan Monastery, which is just within the city, before finally concluding our trip by meeting Buddha at the Petra of China. So what better way to start our historical pilgrimage than to visit one of the oldest relics in Ta Tong, built approximately 1500 years ago by God knows who, the Hanging Monastery. So apparently this place is the only temple in China that consists of three traditional philosophies, Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism. Structurally, aside from the visible columns, I would imagine some horizontal beams going into the bedrock, supporting the cantilever of the temple. But according to the tour guide, it used to be a, a basin of water that supports, um, that is underneath the temple. So it isn't just hanging off nowhere, it's just above the river. But now the river has dried off. The construction of this temple is said to be started by a monk and had many alterations and extensions done to it over the following few thousand years. As to why it was built in such a dangerous position, one can only guess. But here's my thoughts on it. As with most sacred and religious places in China, it requires a bit of worthiness to enter. And to be the chosen one, you have to make your way up these knee breakers. I think the view up here is really amazing. You get the misty mountains, you get a view down below. But for me, the railing is a bit too low and it's a bit scary. So if you have a fear of height, you know, maybe you want to reconsider because one wrong step and you might fall to your death and meet Buddha earlier than you expect. After measuring our worth alongside 50 billion others, we took another hour of bus ride into the ancient city of Da Tong. Da Tong is known as one of the 24 historical cities in China. And dang, look at this wall! I must say though, they really love walls. Since the gloomy weather just cleared off and we have very good fresh air and stuff, just so you know, this place is used as a track because the perimeter that it's, this ancient wall encloses is a very large area. So people use this as a running track. And also you can see many people exercising along this park. Um, and because the air is so clear now, opposite of what popular belief that Da Tong is a very dirty city, I think you can safely exercise and not get any lung cancer. As you would imagine, this fort, with its monolithic watchtowers and endless walls, must have served as some sort of military defense against the Mongols in the past. After making your way up these god steps, you'll be blessed with the view of Da Tong's past, present, and future. Okay, the sky is getting real dark, so I better be quick. Um, it actually feels quite surreal to be up here. On one hand, you can see the Da Tong's ancient buildings, all the single-story, pitched roof buildings that are tainted in black. And then on the other side, you can see the future or the current of Da Tong, which is the, um, the condominiums and all the high-rise building. It would probably take more than an hour if you're up for a hike around the wall, but you can opt for other options to go around it. And if you stick around after sunset, well, let's just say you'll be rewarded. At night, the entire fortress 
all the watchtowers are being lit up so it creates a really wonderful and spectacular view. If you ever come to Ta Tong, please come and visit the ancient wall during the day or during the night. Both is fine and you'll be greeted with this amazing view. As much as we would love to stay up there, our stomachs summoned us down to what seemed like the liveliest alley in the city. In this main alley of the ancient town, you have this beautifully decorated lantern, hanging lanterns. Like it really lights up the whole area. And this whole area is filled with restaurants and little like shop houses so you can take a walk at night, you know, enjoy the scenery, enjoy the, the ancientness of this area. So let's go. After an entire day of ancient China, we thought we should have some traditional looking dinner as well. You know, just to fit the theme. So it's been a very tiring day. And if you are in Ta Tong, typically you are supposed to eat their traditional like food or snacks, which is the noodle and the siu mai. But because we are very hungry, um, we decided to get some hot pot. And Ta Tong's hot pot is slightly different from Beijing, even though it has the same bronze um, pot with that erection in the middle with all the coal. Um, Ta Tong is known as the coal city, so I hope that the coal will make it taste better. And because it's a very cold day, um, hot pot is very good and hot pot would warm our bodies. The difference between the Ta Tong hot pot and the Beijing hot pot is that the broth of this soup gets tastier and tastier because um, the more you cook with it, the better it tastes. Whereas the Beijing hot pot, the, the broth is clear, so it emphasizes on the freshness of the ingredient. So we'll see how it tastes, but I'm a soup person, so I think I'll like this version more. And because it's in the northern part of China, the lamb here is said to be very good as well. Almost on the same level as Mongolia or Beijing, so I think it's starting to turn me to a lamb person. Mm. The meat is very bouncy and the tendon, there's a bit of tendon in it, so it has a bit of chewiness and bounciness to it. We haven't had any proper food for the entire day because we are constantly on the road, so this is really well deserved. I think this is some sort of um, sweet potato noodles or some rice noodle. But I think it will go better with um, the flavored broth because you know it's kind of plain. If you put it in the plain broth, it's gonna taste of nothing. So we we'll see how it tastes. I don't know what noodle is it. I think it's sweet potato, but it's very bouncy and very chewy. I really like it. So I'm sure you've heard that China is experiencing a lot of power outages because of the trade wars and cold political issues with Australia. So I've never experienced it when I'm eating before. Oh, and it's back. Shanxi is a noodle heaven and this time we got to try the hand pulled noodles. Kindly pulled by our Fu Yuan aka waiter. Yeah, it actually is like a piang piang noodle. So if you add it with the sesame paste, it will be very good. And that sums up our slurping good first day in Ta Tong. Ah, so we've just got back from dinner, had a shower, cleaned up, getting ready for bed for an early morning tomorrow. Unfortunately, the weather forecast is 100% raining for the entire day tomorrow. So fingers crossed that things will change for the better, but chances are pretty slim. And another thing for you guys who are planning to come to China and going for a budget hotel stay, um, it's kind of almost impossible uh, because of the strict regulations for foreigners now. And only, I think, hotels of four to five stars, very rarely those of three stars will allow foreigners to stay. So it's not that we want to you know, splurge out, but yeah, these are really the options left for foreigners. So anyway, we'll catch up with you tomorrow. So this hotel offers you some complimentary breakfast and there is the traditional type of uh, Da Tong breakfast style, you know, the Chinese version. And then you also have the Western style with the bacon, sausages and stuff. But you know, since we're already in Da Tong, I want to try the very famous Xiu Mai. So this is the one that's slightly special and they say that it's special because, you know, 
the tip of the shiuma it's very flowery so it's more beautiful um, but it's also said that the taste would be better so for me it's a uh, it tastes similar to the the Hong Kong style siu mai it's just that the skin is a bit um, slightly thicker but the top part is very flowery and very thin so very unique but really not much difference from the Hong Kong version the chef was like cutting the the, the noodles out of the dough like it was so cool I've never seen anything like that but let's give it a go Typically, you can add more condiments like, you know, shaved um, cucumber and lettuce, but um, I just had some, like, too much carbs, so I, I didn't want to eat too much, so just a small bowl to try it. After checking out, we ventured half an hour by bus to the Hua Yan Monastery, and as if we hadn't had enough, this place is filled with temples, temples, and yep, you guessed it, more f temples. So we're just outside the Great Hall on the Upper Monastery and inside there's this huge hall with all the Buddhas and all the disciples that are leaning forward. I don't know what it means symbolically, but it's like, it's really special inside and the walls are all covered with murals and stuff. But yeah, if you come here, you should visit the big hall here, the Great Hall in the Upper Monastery. Some of these temples are guarded by these deities and what did this poor soul do to deserve this? Ah uh, well, at least he's not alone. So the temple architecture here and the garden clearly reminds you of Korean and Japanese influences. I'm not sure who influenced who, but they, are, they look similar. And you can see from the, veran the covered veranda, the pitched roof with tiles on it, it all looks very similar to Koreans and Japanese but I guess most Asian temples kind of look similar in some sort of ways. If you come to the Hua Yuan Monastery, there is also a place that you should visit which is the pagoda. Purely constructed out of timber and not a single nail is used in its construction. Underneath the pagoda lies a copper mine. There is like a hundred little Buddha statues made completely out of copper and you can see it's clearly a marvel. It almost feels like a bank vault in here with all the copper plating and stuff. So if you come here, you must visit this underground mine. One can almost be forgiven for mistaking this as a set for Squid Game. Or is it? Alright, jokes aside, let's head to the top. Oh, you got to be kidding me. It's the return of the knee breakers. <sighs> Anyway... After you've made the tedious climb up the pagoda, you'll be greeted with an almost panoramic view of the city. And it's quite amazing. It's almost similar to the Ta Tong Great Wall, but this is quite good. Just before any of us had the chance to become monks or nuns, we quickly departed for our next and final stop, the Petra of China. Ah, the weather didn't get any better, but let's get back to business. Similar to the Petra of Jordan, the Yungang Grottoes is an architectural rock cut marvel. And this is a UNESCO heritage site. It is also listed as the China top tourist attraction given the 5A rating. In case you don't know, 5A is given to the top scenic areas in China by the China Tourism Association. So this is like godlike top tier level. I thought that Buddhism was the bomb here, but I was wrong. Not only Buddhism was the bomb, Buddha was here. Buddha was actually here. So there are a few thousand caves here, and this is considered one big cave. And all those tiny, tiny little holes, they are considered small caves. So initially I thought caves would be like, you know, the Aladdin, like Cave of Wonders. But I was quite amazed that these tiny small ones are considered small caves as well. So really interesting. It's really quite amazing if you think about it. 1,500 years ago, someone was here carving his life away. And I'm here today, along with several other billion people, touching the same thing. And uh, probably not a very good idea, but it's quite an amazing place. I really wonder how they do it. Like, look at all the intricate carvings. It's super amazing. But you know, it's really packed inside, so you might want to come during a non-holiday period. 
So that pretty much sums up our two-day trip to the ancient city of Da Tong, filled with good food, amazing architecture, and a lifetime of Buddhas to remember. But the trip was not without any speed bumps. Look at that, even the Buddha is crying. We met the bad weather, the ton of tourists, but overall the trip was amazing. It was not too bad. And if you're interested, I left a breakdown on the cost of this entire trip down in the description box. But for now, many thanks for joining us. We'll head back to the bus for another five hours ride back to Beijing. And don't forget to subscribe and stay so thirsty.